thought it might be helpful to share 10 uncommon or rare plants that I feel may not have been worth every penny that I paid for them. I've owned all of these plants. The ones that died, I usually purchased again to give it another go. I'm not saying not to buy these plants that I'm going to talk about because I love all plants and I think they're all amazing. And I love all of these plants that I'm going to be sharing today, but there are definitely things that I wish I would have known. So I have a little glass of wine in remembrance of some of these plants that I've killed. Again, some are still alive, which I'll show. Um, and if you're new, welcome. My name's Ashley. I'm a crazy plant lady and proud. So if this kind of thing makes you happy and brings a smile to your face, make sure to subscribe. I post about once a week, always good plants content and we also have a really great community on Instagram. And as I'm going through, definitely leave in the comments if there are any rare or uncommon plants that you feel aren't worth every penny that, you know, had you known what you know now, you might not have purchased them. So that way we can all look at the comments and kind of keep that in the back of our head as we're doing our plant shopping. Now a huge thank you to our friends at Bright Cellars for sponsoring this video. You guys know I'm obsessed with Bright Cellars. They are the wine club that believes anybody can experience the joy of wine. You can have amazing, amazing wines delivered right to your door. To get started, you take a quick seven question quiz where they match you with wines from all over the world curated to your taste palette. You can choose from 12 different plant options and get 100 plus varietals sourced from over 80 wine regions delivered right to your doorstep. Each box comes with wine education cards for each bottle that outlines tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temps, and origins. They have over 600,000 five-star reviews, and if you don't like a bottle, they will replace it. At this point, it's not just me that gets excited about my delivery day. My husband's excited because we can pair it with food. My mom gets excited about it. She loves to come over and try out new wines. Anytime I have friends over, they're to the point now like, hey, do you have like new wines to try out from your wine club? And it's a great gift as well. Now, Bright Sellers is giving my followers their first six bottle subscription box, which is usually $150 or more for just $60. So a huge thank you to them for that. So you can click on the link in the description to take the quiz and get started today. So I'm gonna jump into it with the first plant. Um, it's one that I actually recently purchased, but I have owned it before and it didn't work out. So let me grab it. This is a variegated alocasia. I managed to get it for $89, but I had just seen it at the store for $200. And this is recently. So this plant is still very, very expensive. And I did have a smaller one of these back in the day and I did everything to keep it alive and I couldn't. And I do really love this plant, hence why I just paid $90 to add it to my collection. But I did that with the knowledge that it might not, if not probably won't work out with this plant. And I say that because a lot of us know alocasias can be really, really tricky. This one, within a matter of a couple weeks, I noticed spider mites on it. And I cannot really do keep these alive inside my house. This one is doing really well because I have it outside. It's the middle of summer right now. It's super humid, it's super hot, and this alocasia is loving that. I still have to treat it for spider mites outside. I spray it with insecticidal soap and give it systemic granules, and it's doing really well. But I know in the winter time when I have to bring this plant inside, it's definitely going to struggle, if not go dormant, and then it's a 50-50 chance of if it comes back to life next year. So I would say just like keep it in mind that these plants may not be, you know, worth the money just because they can be really um, disease prone and pest prone. And then also difficult to keep alive, even if you have all the pests and stuff under control, specifically the variegated alocasia. Like I've also struggled with alocasia friedeck and I feel like an, a variegated alocasia friedeck would be so, so beautiful to have in my collection but I wonder because I've had three different alocasia friedex that have all been absolutely destroyed by spider mites. So I wonder if a variegated one would be just as susceptible to it, but they are absolutely beautiful. I love these variegated alocasias, but it's almost like, I don't know if it's worth the money for a plant that might not make it. Next up is a variegated philodendron burl marks. Um, the regular burl marks that are just green like this, 
amazing. Like 10 out of 10 recommend. They're super fast growers. They're really hardy. They can tolerate all sorts of conditions. Can't recommend the regular philodendron burl marks enough, but the variegated ones are just so not worth it. Um, and the reason why is because the, the variegation isn't stable. Like I've trimmed this one back numerous times. I've tried propagating it and it's just the variegation just goes away. And that would be fine, except that they're so expensive to get the variegated ones. And as you can see, the variegation is really, really beautiful, like such a stunning plant. But again, when you're paying all that money and the variegation like goes away instantly, it's getting a lot of flat. I mean, if you guys have any recommendations, let me know. But I've had this plant for a number of years and it's been pretty consistent with the lack of variegations. I mean, my only suggestion would be that if you do want one of these plants, just make sure that the stem is very, very highly variegated. Like you see white streaks going through it because I have noticed on this one that a lot of the stems ended up becoming solid and therefore the leaves went solid. Like I've heard that about Monstera as well, like variegated Monsteras. You just wanna make sure there's even like a greater insurance policy that it's going to produce variegated leaves is making sure that the stems are variegated. Yeah, this is another one. What did I pay for this? $185, <laughs> so then when you can go and buy one for 20 bucks from a big box shop that's not variegated, that's really like super lovely. I heard that about this plant from other people, like watch out, the variegation isn't very stable on it. I would say definitely go for it if you can find one that's not expensive because they're beautiful and they're really, really great easy care plants, even the variegated ones. But if it's super expensive and you're kind of on the fence, I would say go for other variegated philodendron varieties. Next up is philodendron melanochrysum. So I'll put a picture here um, so that you can see like what a, you know, beautiful philodendron melanochrysum looks like. I've probably purchased at least three of these, I'd say. Um, and as long as you can really be diligent about care on these plants, they're great. Uh, but I just, have really struggled in numerous ways with these plants. First of all, every single one that I've gotten has had spider mites for some reason. Um, and most of my philodendrons haven't suffered with spider mites like my philodendron melanochrysum has. And they also have like such delicate, fragile roots, like such thin roots. Most of my philodendrons don't have the thin roots like melanochrysum have, that they can be somewhat tricky when we repot them, if I give them treatment, if they're just really, really sensitive plants. And they don't handle, um, <laughs> they don't handle under watering well. So I sometimes can't be super on top of watering my plants and the melanochrysum really struggles with that. Like if I go one or two days um, extra, of when I should have been wa watered it two days before and I don't stay on top of it, they just like, it immediately dies. Now a lot of that has to do usually with like really thin leaves and that kind of thing, but melanochrysum's leaves aren't that thin. I just, I don't understand what it is with melanochrysum that I struggle with. They're so beautiful, but I would say like philodendron splendid, which is a, a hybrid. That one looks very similar to melanochrysum and I have no problems with it. It's doing great. So it's just melanochrysums that I really struggle with. However, they are pretty easy to propagate. So like this one that's died off, I'm just gonna go ahead and like chop it up and put it in a prop box. Like it's putting out a new, <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but it's putting out like a new leaf. It's just, it's just, I don't know what it is with melanochrysum. And they're still pretty expensive. Like this one I got not long ago and it's $60 for, it was probably like this big when I got it, just like this part here. Just know, because I still will probably get another melanochrysum in the future, just know that they are very sensitive to watering um, and they tend to be pest prone in my experience and they're just really finicky. Like you have to stay on top of giving them something to climb or else they get really leggy, um, you know. But they're beautiful, but they're beautiful, but it's disappointment you're hearing in my voice because I love them so much. Like I feel disappointed in this plant. Like, come on, bud. 
Anyways, we're gonna give it another gum and a chop and prop and fingers crossed for next time. Who knows, maybe the next time I do one of these videos, I'll take back everything I said about melanocrysum. That would be, that would be amazing. Oh, uh, this video is hurting my heart. I wasn't expecting to go through because I don't want to deter everyone from like buying these plants because they're all amazing. But philodendron brantianum, I, I just, you know, this plant is a lot harder than I was expecting. So if you can find it at a big box shop for $13, go for it. But if you don't have this plant readily available in your area and you're looking to buy one online or from like a plant shop for a lot of money, just know that whatever size the plant is when you buy it, that unless you have pristine humidity, sunlight, everything, the new leaves are gonna look a lot like, like, it won't focus, but like that, or like this, or like this. And they just, the size you get it is probably the size it will stay, because you'll wanna trim back all of these. So easy to propagate this plant. Does great with propagation. Chop and prop, stick it in some water at a node, and it puts out roots like, nobody's business, but the leaves, again, unless you have perfect humidity, sunlight, everything, the leaves stay small and kind of shrivelly. and I thought it might just be me, but from what I've been reading, other people are experiencing the same struggles with this plant. Any Brantianum tips you have that would be an easy fix or easy solution to this problem, leave them in the comments. Fabulous, beautiful plant, absolutely obsessed. I'm going to continue to have it in my collection, but... Again, I don't know if it's worth every penny if you're paying a lot for it because depending where you live, this plant is either uncommon or you can find it easily. So. Oh boy. I don't know, I just don't like not talking good about plants, but okay, on to the next. This is a Hoya curtisii and this Hoya is just, it's beautiful, but it is a huge pain in the butt. Now, sometimes you can find these um, at a big box shop, not super expensive. And then other places, they're very, very expensive. So this is one of those Hoyas that you really want to get it because it looks really great when it's healthy and it has like these cute little leaves and et cetera, et cetera. I would say to save your money and only get this plant if you can find a good deal on it because it's definitely not worth every penny if you are wanting to you know, spend a lot of money on a Hoya because they're just so tricky and difficult. And I know I'm not the only one that has struggled with this plant and it keeps like almost dying and coming back, dying and coming back. Um, I mean, again, it comes down to care and I can't seem to figure out the care on this Hoya. So if you're really good at plant care, like just don't, don't listen to me probably on any of these um, plants because a lot of this does come down to care, but this one's really finicky and it's a big deal because Hoyas are usually so easy that when I do have one that's like just really, really gives me a hard time, um, it's very obvious and I really notice it. So just expect if you do have this Hoya that you will get certain runoffs that just die off and that is very normal for this plant. Like don't feel bad. Um, you know, when it does, like it's going through a good stretch right now, but this plant like a few months ago was looking almost dead. And we've had a back and forth, back and forth. I've re had to repot it numerous times. And it's not had knock on wood like a pest problem or anything. It's just hard to get the routine down with this Hoya. But it is very, very beautiful. And I got really lucky that I found this one at a big box shop, but I have seen them at plant shops and they're pretty expensive at a plant shop, not a big box shop. So yeah, Hoya Curtisii, I don't know that it's worth every penny if you have to pay a lot of money for it. Oh, quick drink because this next one is all right this is a Hoya compacta variegata and let me say something before you guys are like what what are you talking about Ashley because this is a favorite amongst the plant community I would say if there's a small one and it's a very very expensive don't waste your money especially if you're wanting it to grow right you're gonna get a smaller plant pay less in the hopes that it's going to in a year or two be have a lot of new growth 
Now, if you're getting just the regular Hoya compacta, like the green ones, I'd say those grow pretty steadily. Um, and you have a good chance in a couple of years having a nice sized plant with the correct care. I don't think that's the case with the variegated versions. They are slow, like super, super slow growing. So if you're wanting a nice size one of these, save your money, don't spend it on a little one and just go for it with a, with a much larger um, plant. And I'd say the larger Hoya, um, variegated Hoya compactas are worth it, but they are prone to pests. Um, so just expect some sort of mealybugs, just be ready to treat it and definitely proactively treat it when you bring it home. I recently purchased a nice large size Hoya uh, variegated compacta and it's great. I'm so glad I did buy it. I don't remember how much I spent on it. I think like $60 around there, which was a steal and it got mealybugs right away. So just know like it's, it's fine. Just be prepared for pests because they get caught up in the little folds. But I'd say a small Hoya Compacta Variegata, like, unless you want it to look like this forever, which is great because it's super cute, but I don't know that it's, that it's worth it. The next one I have owned multiples of and I have killed them all and it is a Mickey Mouse Tarot. I mean, this one is so hard to keep happy. It almost inevitably gets spider mites. Um, and it ha it's an outdoor plant, so it really wants that humid outside temperature. These plants struggle so much indoors. I don't know why they're sold as house plants. Now I'm obsessed with them. They're called Mickey Mouse plants because they have like the Mickey Mouse ears and the Mickey Mouse tail and they have beautiful variegation. I mean, I'm obsessed with the plant. They're so, so beautiful. And I wish I could keep this plant happy, but they are very expensive. So if you're thinking about adding this one to your collection, just know that it's probably gonna struggle. The next one is a Piper Crocatum. They're so beautiful and I would probably add another one, but I've had multiple ones of these plants and I've just really struggled with them. And it's one of those like, if it doesn't get water right when it needs it, it'll die. But they're definitely needy plants, but they are very, very beautiful like such stunners. The other one that kind of is along the same line is the Cissus Discolor. I've had multiples of this plant and they just always go crispy and, and die off. And I water my plants once a week. It's not like I'm like, you know, totally neglecting my plants, but uh, Piper Crocatums and Cissus Discolors, both of those are pretty expensive still here in the Charlotte area. And they're just, super needy. I'd say the Cis is discolor more so than the Piper Crocatum. I don't know if it's worth, worth the money, like for those. Let me know what you think. <laughs> I think everyone will agree with me on this one. It's the Calathea White Fusions and slash Yellow Fusions. And I know I'm not the only one that struggles with Calatheas. I don't find that they're maybe as needy as other Calatheas, but they just get the spider mites like that. Like, I've had multiples of the Calathea White Fusions and they're so beautiful. That's why I like keep wanting to get them. And they have the Yellow Fusions as well. And they have a lot of leaves. So it's hard to stay on top of a pest problem when there's a lot of leaves like that to deal with. Oh, I don't think I would get another Calathea White Fusion to add to my collection, even though they're so stunning. You know, if I feel, I feel like if I had a really small plant collection, I'd probably get some of these plants. So those are the top ones that came to mind. Again, I have a lot of plants that I've purchased and that haven't made it over the years. So I could easily do another one of these if you guys like this content. Um, again, it's still positive and I love all these plants, just they're a bit of a struggle um, for me particularly, maybe not for everyone else. So leave in the comments, like any care tips that you have for these specific plants that may help all of us or any plants that you feel aren't worth every penny. Um, and the reasons why, like that's super, super helpful for all of us. Cause we can kind of like read the comments and keep in the back of our mind when we're shopping for plants. Thank you again to Bright Sellers. They are such a great company and I am obsessed with their wines. Now Bright Sellers is giving my followers their first six bottle subscription box, which is usually $150 or more for just $60. So a huge thank you to them for that. So you can click on the link in the description to take the quiz and get started today. Now don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see future episodes show up in your newsfeed and we also have a wonderful community on Instagram. All right, everyone, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. You'll definitely be seeing me soon. Bye.